Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Town. So, this game is really, really good. I, I obviously haven't heard of it. So, guys, this is part three. Leave a light and let's continue. Okay, so what's this? A chest with a half circle pattern. Alright, I need uh, subterfuges to unlock it. I uh, the tea. So we'll look for tea to open that. My dear Elizabeth, I'm writing to inform you of some unfortunate news. We won't be able to meet as planned on the first Sunday of May. I've been told that you're no better, and unfortunately, your brothers and I are absolutely snowed under by the work required to govern this new country. Please excuse us. As soon as we can get free, even if it's just for a day, I promise we shall come and see you. Your loving father, John Adams. P.S. Don't hold it against your mother if she still isn't ready. Please don't judge her. I'm sure you will be able to put all of this behind you one day. What what is the mother not ready for? Hmm. What's Elizabeth up to? I mean, she's obviously obsessed with the devil or something because there's a pentagram on the floor. She's obviously obsessed with like the devil. Was she like possessed or something? Maybe. Collect the toys. Carmelite water. Royal jelly, which is nice. Looks like I found a box containing some kind of white crystals. Can some of them? Why? Well, let's see what it tastes like. Ugh. I really need to stop tasting everything I find now. <laughs> Maybe I shouldn't have tasted that. A novel of the initiation of a young woman into a polite society. Psychology, okay, so nice. So, see my pets? What uh, did I take them up? So I know that's Elizabeth Adams. Oh, okay, she is a bit ill looking. Holy hell. In fact, yeah, that's that tea. 30 November, 1791. My dear sister, the cancellation of our reunion hit me like a stab to the heart. Father told me it was for your well being, but I can't help but blame him. He claims that your condition has worsened and that. It could be dangerous for both of us if we met. If only I knew where you were, believe me, I'd be at your side. I haven't received any news from you in a long time. Please write. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. I hope you like the enclosed talisman. Ab Abigail, I like that name. June 11th, 1791. Oh, that's the same one. All right. August 24th, 1792. Elizabeth, I am driven to despair and doubt there is any point in writing to you. I'm not even sure you'll receive my letters. Father controls my correspondence more and more. I am certain he filters our exchanges. Thankfully, one of the chambermaids is able to help me get my letters to you. But they still remain unanswered. I often think about you and pray every day to be able to hold you tight. We have so much time to make up. I beg you, answer me, please. Your loving sister, Abigail. P.S. That horrible woman came again yesterday. She spent a long time speaking with father. I didn't understand everything because they spoke in French, but I'm sure they were talking about you. See that horrible woman that we're talking about? Is that Louis Muller? Sarah? It could be. I mean, I think it is. I think it's his mom. Okay. 
I got that red thing away from up in the corner of the screen. That's the crystals at the end. So, we didn't find out what happened to our room. I can open this though. A chest with a half oh, yeah. circle pattern. I can open it though, I've got the tea. Wait, oh hey, what's the tea for then? This room is absolutely trashed. Alright, let's just go. I need to get to the red salon on the first floor. I think they're having a dinner there where I'll meet Mortimer. I hint I heard that right. Who's this? Uh, George Washington. Okay. It's very clunky, these controls today. They're very, like, glitchy. I hope I don't run into a glitch. That's all I need. Red salon, salon. First floor, so I'm on the setting, probably. Oh, I can't do it down here. That's weird. Says the first floor. I can't do it down to the first floor. Unless it's here, maybe. Yeah. Well, that makes sense though. Elizabeth! Excuse me, Monsieur de Richet. I really need to talk to you. Is this about last night? No, that was just a misunderstanding. I'm sure it was a little bit my fault too. There's no excuse for that man's horrible behavior. You ought to tell Sir Holm. Look, the only thing that I care about is that I've lost something precious. What? I'm not worried about Jack Peru. I'm, I'm sorry. I should have stopped him from beating you. What's done is done. It was my fault, not yours. Don't say that. It's never the victim's fault. Look at your eye. My eyes nothing. Last night, I found out that your mother was on the island. What are you doing here? My mother came here to do business with Lord Mortimer, but she seems to have gone missing. So I'm here to find her. I know your mother very well. Really? Yes, I have been in your mother's care ever since I was born. She nursed you. Oh, I wouldn't say nursed. No, I remember her stare, cold as ice. Her sadistic hands pressing over my mouth to silence me while I screamed in pain. I remember her knees, too. She held me down with them while she cut and burned scars into me. Hold on a minute. What do you mean? That's not my mother. You can mother. ask her when you see her. Huh, she's getting more and more agitated. And next, you're gonna tell me my mother's also responsible for that scar on your head? My heart stopped twice during the operation. I lost my memory for six months. You obviously have no idea of the abuse your mother inflicted on me. Wait, there must be some kind of mistake. My only mistake was ever meeting your mother. She's able to describe every detail without hesitation or getting flustered. It's becoming difficult not to believe the poor girl. Look, I've, I've gotta go. Wait. I need to know more about you and my mother. Why did she put you through all of that? Uh -oh. There must be some reason for what she did. What's the point of rubbing salt in the wounds? Elizabeth, confiding in me might ease your burden. Let me relieve you of some of your suffering. Relieve me? Do you even hear yourself? Do you really think that by confiding in my torturer's son, I will be healed as if by magic? That it will bring my smile back or let me sleep at night? Look, Shut. you don't seem like a bad person. And I'm sorry you have to find out your mother's true colors like this. 
But I'm not going to pity you. Everybody has their cross to bear. I know your little game. You're no different from the rest of them. You couldn't give a damn about me. The only thing you're interested in is finding out about your mother. Don't say that. Not, not everyone wants to use you. Some people care about you, don't they? Uh, a sister. Haven't you got a sister? Yes. I'm sure she loves you with all her heart. She's the only one who cares about me. I would have put an end to it all by now if it weren't for her. Oh. Oh. Since you insist, I'll tell you how I met your mother. Thanks for trusting me. You see, before I was born, my mother often suffered from hallucinations and fits of anger. Soon people could barely recognize her. She became a completely different person. So my father spent an enormous amount of money paying for the best doctors, but none of them were able to cure her. The last resort was to call a priest. So, is that what your father did? No. He went to an expert in the occult. Ah, my mother. Her reputation already extended beyond our borders. My mother's fit stopped at my birth, and Sarah de Richet concluded that the evil had passed into me. Not only did it encourage her to stay, but she took the opportunity to advise my father to separate me from the rest of my family. That's how I was declared stillborn. My fate was decided that very day. It would coincide with my mother's frequent trips to America. I had my first fit when I was three. That's when your mother began her experiments to rid me of the evil inside. I understand how you feel, but I know my mother. I'm sure she had her reasons, even if it seems difficult to believe. Everything she put me through was all for nothing. My whole life was ruined for nothing. So what brings you here then? My father used to know Sir Holm. He offered to introduce me to the world's leading authority in the occult. Lord Mortimer. He was my last hope. Until I found out he had also invited your mother. It's got to be a coincidence. I don't believe for a second she's come here for you. You can't change my mind about this, Louis. My days are numbered, and I know it. That's weird, though. That's really, really quite weird. So, they thought she was possessed, and then his mother, like, tried to be like a demonologist to get it out of her. I don't know whether to believe her or but my mom seems taper to or something like that. Have I talked to this thing? What can I do for you, sir? I don't know yet. I am at your service day and night, sir. Yes. Oh yeah, a lot of stuff actually. Uh I would like to speak about your master, Lord Mortimer. Do please excuse me, sir, but I shall make no comment about my master. Is there anything else that Sir would like to know? What's on the first floor? The first floor is reserved for guests, Sir. That is where Sir will find his private rooms. The main corridor leads around the building. Three stairways will enable Sir to return to the ground floor. Okay. It is also from there that Sir will be able to reach the second floor. Thank you very much. Anything else, sir? Yes. What can I find on the second floor? That floor is strictly reserved for Lord Mortimer, sir. In the west wing on the second floor are his private chambers. In the east wing are the rooms reserved for Lord Mortimer's personal guests. At the moment, these rooms are reserved for Sir Holm, sir. But only authorized guests may access that area. Okay. Oh, hey. Does sir have any more questions? What is outside on the island exactly? Lord Mortimer has made a point of keeping the main part of the island in its natural state, sir. For security reasons, only the wharves and the gardens are accessible to guests. If sir would like to walk along the wharves, he has only to follow the pathway used upon his arrival. If he would like to walk in the interior gardens of the manor, 
I would advise, sir, to pass through the portrait gallery. May I help, sir, in any other way? Uh... What can you tell me about the guests? Do excuse me, sir, but I am bound by discretion to say nothing about Lord Mortimer's guests, sir. Perhaps, sir, uh, would like to know something else? I'll... I'll pay you. No? Alright, then. As I was unable to bring my personal effects with me, I was wondering if you could find me a few items. Of course, sir. What would you require? Uh, maybe some golden elixir? You wouldn't have a little golden elixir I could use, would you? Oh, unfortunately, sir, I have orders not to give any of that medicine to any of Lord Mortimer's guests. Some guests are here to follow a very strict treatment. Mixing or combining certain substances would be dangerous for sir. That's free though. That's fine. I have no intention of swallowing this remedy. You see, I generally use it to put the shine back on my shoes. But maybe you'd rather I ask permission from Lord Mortimer. Where is he? I'd like to tell him about my shoe problem. Sir, need do nothing of the sort. There is no reason to disturb Lord Mortimer with this small matter. As you wish. Here you are, sir. I hope sir will have enough with one bottle, as I haven't any more. Oh, I'll make do. It's good of you to get this much. May I do anything else for sir? Uh, any Tamalite water? A little Carmelite water would do me a lot of good. Could you find me some, please? Oh, the tonics are under lock and key, sir. Lord Mortimer only allows access to them in cases of emergency. All right, that's fine. My oh, good no. fellow, ah. would you have any amber available? I would, but unfortunately, I don't think I am authorized to give it out, sir. I believe it is a precious stone. No, I don't want to see what from him. That's five as well. Okay. Okay, anybody here? Anybody here? I've not actually even done anything yet. I've just talked to a bunch of people. Is it in here? And it's in here. Hey! She is sexy. She's a sexy lady. So am I going to meet Lord Mortimer? Does this thing look weird to you? Oh, Dear friends, me. I bid you welcome. I hope the night was not too short. Your Eminence, Duchess, Monsieur de Richet, allow me to introduce our new guests. They arrived during the night. Johann Christoph von Wollner, Minister of Religious Affairs and close aide of Frederick William II, King of Prussia. Napoleon Bonaparte, Lieutenant of the French Revolutionary Army. And Jacques Peru, French Peru. Revolutionary Tribunal Judge. Unfortunately, my friends, Lord Mortimer will not be joining us this morning, but he should be with us later. So, let us begin. What is Mortimer playing at? He tells me to come urgently and he sends no one to meet me? Of course. Thank you again for the wine, Your Eminence. It is served every day at the King's table. I am delighted. Uh, Volner and Piaggi seem to be getting along well. Please feel at home. Surprising when you know Volner prohibited religious practices in Prussia. Renowned member of the Rose Qua Order, former Freemason and great lover of alchemy. And look at Piaggi fawning over him. I really do have a problem digesting political protocol. My dear Johan, how are you? Glad to make landfall at last. And yourself? Very well. And your husband? He's poorly. The French Revolution gives him terrible headaches. Oh, I understand. I shall feel better too, as soon as the situation is settled. If by chance the French crisis is emulated in Berlin, there will always be a refuge for you in London, my dear. Your offer does you honor. But London is much closer to Paris than Berlin. Beware. 
The French are capable of sailing up the Thames straight to the Houses of Parliament. Oh, my friend, I am shaking in my clogs. <laughs> <laughs> no, not funny. Is the wine to your liking? Very much so, Sir Gregory. No. Such complexity. Typically French. A Souterne, isn't it? Absolutely. If I'm not mistaken, this is not Lord Mortimer's favourite wine. It is yours. In his absence, I have taken the liberty of making a slight deviation from the rule. But I count on your discretion. <laughs> Don't worry. I appreciate the same grape varieties as you. I remember the last time we tasted that nectar here at this table. The finest minds of the century were present. And the last time we drank it, the orphanage in Bloomsbury was still in ruins. Would... would you repeat that? Oh, well, I put hmm. some small <laughs> effort into the works. The orphanage reopened just before Christmas. The bedrooms, washrooms, and the classrooms had all been refurbished. I... I don't know what to say. You have given the girls a wonderful Christmas gift. Thank you. I made a promise. Now it is done. Okay. It's the first time I've ever seen her so moved. I just mentioned that orphanage broke right through Emily's hard shell. Is everything all right? Yes, thank you. I mm -hmm. had a moment of absence, but here I am again. What do you think of Volner? The Prussian king is his puppet. I find it hard to believe the king of Prussia is so weak. Be careful. Volner is as influential as he is dangerous. You seem to know each other well. We used to work together. I see. <laughs> oh, hey. Have you any information on this Napoleon? Who does not know about He's certainly well connected and in high places. Surprising. No one appears to know him. No one knows me, and yet here I am. Quite so. Monsieur de Richet, it would seem we have common interests. Could we speak in private, please? Of course. Napoleon. Oh, uh, am I done need to do a confrontation with this guy? Probably, right? Lord Mortimer and the Golden Order, through your mother, have concluded a financial agreement. Stay composed, Louis. I'm listening. An agreement for cannons. Lord Mortimer assured me that you are to take over the project on behalf of your mother. You must know that I am deeply sorry about our disappearance, but I must validate the deal urgently if I want to be able to organize things properly. I haven't seen Lord Mortimer yet. I'm afraid I'll be unable to answer your questions. He assured me that you could replace your mother during her absence. I appreciate absence. his confidence, but still, this is a bit hasty. But please continue. It is remarkable. Of course, but I need to know if I can count you among my yep. allies. Well, of course. And for that, I have a little question for you. The agreement stipulates an aid of 50,000 Louis d'or for 200 cannon. Ah, I see. Uh... Absolutely. 50,000 Louis d'or in hard cash. The offer I'm talking about was for only 20,000 Louis d'or, Monsieur de Richet. The truth is, you really have no idea about our agreement. So, you're wasting my time. I need to work with people I can have confidence in, sir. The exact numbers may have escaped me. I suggest you wait for my mother's return in order to manage such details. I have one last question I would like to pose to you. We don't know each other yet, you and I. And I need to make sure that we both share the same vision for the future of France. Vision. Given the hard times that have befallen our beautiful country, what do you think it would take to restore its uh, luster?
The revolution was a good thing, but it gave birth to a monster. We must overthrow the new system in place. Yes. Ah, you are right. Oh. Monsieur de Richer, I am reassured. I am very happy to have met you. Lord Mortimer was right to put his trust in you. I hope to work with you in the very near future. I would like to thank you for your support by offering you this humble little gift. Hmm. Reflections on the revolution in France. Monsieur Bonaparte, I thank you for this gesture and please know that I too am delighted to have met you. Guys, how am I doing this? Holy crap. Friends, I would like to say a few words, please. I would like to thank Lord Mortimer and you, Sir Holm, for bringing us all together here. Those of us for whom it is not the first time here, like me, are all trembling in sweet anticipation of the arrival of our host. For the rest, I would like to reassure you that Lord Mortimer always has a few surprising projects to propose. <laughs> but I can assure you that each and every one of us has always benefited from them. <laughs> The last time I came to this place, Lord Mortimer offered to help me in my electoral campaign for the Presidency of the United States. And it is imminently clear that his support was an invaluable aid to us. We are here among like-minded people. So let us put aside the conflicts in which some of our nations find themselves at present. So I raise my glass in honor of you all my new and old friends. I trust you shall not be disappointed, Mr. Washington. Right, we shall meet again tomorrow. Oh, hey. All the guests will be present, as well as Lord Mortimer, I hope. Until then, I trust you will find plenty to keep you amused. Let me read the rooms and that will. I found my mother's message hidden in the boot of my house. It was through Elizabeth to talk to me. I met the deaths. I proved to Napoleon. Uh, I searched Elizabeth Adams' room. I doubted one part. I should have searched Napoleon's room. Oh, I should have. Really? God oh, damn it. Level 4, baby. Okay. Nice. Alright, I can get through these now. We can do a little bit longer. Alright, let's recap. Before dinner, I was going to investigate my mother's message. I've got to find the place where all eyes size you up. Right, all eyes size you up. Tell me one. Really? It's a bit shy, is it not? I can talk to P.I.D. Well, your eminence, do you still have any room left? Ah, my son, this scene of gluttony is the most difficult of all in my eyes. Nevertheless, what a charming moment we have had together. I'm delighted I was able to talk to Mr. Von Waldner. We hadn't spoken to each other for an eternity. Yes, I noticed that your eminence knew a fair number of people at the table. The benefit of age, my son. <laughs> this isn't my first invitation to Lord Mortimer's. You will see, it's the perfect place to make new friends. Indeed, I noticed that you and Mr. Bonaparte had already begun. Ah, I adapt quickly to local customs. It's what I was taught. <laughs> and you are right to do so, my son. But tell me, have you had any news of your mother since your arrival? <sighs> Alas, still nothing. Your minutes, but I still haven't been able to meet Lord Mortimer. Do not worry. It is typical of him. What can I say? Lord Mortimer is a very busy man. I should think you are beginning to worry. Uh... To tell you the truth, not really. You are right. Be positive. 
Perhaps Sarah is in the company of Lord Mortimer, and they will both turn up shortly. <laughs> but while I have you with me, I, I have a question for you. Well, go ahead, Louis. What can I do for you? I'll let, I'll As I haven't that. visited all the manor yet, I wondered if you hadn't seen a Medusa by any chance. I beg your pardon? Yes, la, la Gorgogne, the Medusa from Greek mythology. Would you have seen one in any shape or form? Not at all, my son. I'm not sure what you're getting at, but unfortunately, I, I'm not going to be of any use to you. Thank you anyway, Your Eminence. I won't take up any more of your time. On that last word, then I shall leave you to fight your demons. See you later, Your Eminence. See you later, my son. All right, so he's got no clue what I was talking about. He looked right through me. Uh, so I don't find my do's a painting. That's right. The lock is surrounded by a triple circle. Is that for the T? Nope. Uh, what's the T for? Devil's fawn. Okay. So, find the place mentioned by your mother. My mother talks in riddles, though. Discourse on the Method by Descartes. This book changed the way I looked at the world. Circe preparing wine. What better trap for Ulysses? Did he not get poisoned, Ulysses? Circe turning Ulysses' companions back into humans. Right, anybody out here? Why is it always drop at the side all the time? I notice. The only person sizing me up here is that monumental Zeus. It can't be here. Yeah, uh, nothing else that is right enough. Maybe here? A Greek drachma. One of the rare ancient coins to be mentioned, both in the Bible and in the Quran. Hey, these look like pages taken from an ancient encyclopedia. There's a pattern with five circles on this chest. Yeah. Yeah, found the tea. All right, I've retrieved everything. So, is, is any of these books to do with it? The middle of the fin. Maybe it's a painting. No, that's locked, so it's not here either. I did use the tea though, which is too good. I hate the way it puts you up like that. I really do. And you said it's only the sus fin that's looking at him here. So, let's go back through here. Golden slings, I hate them. So, Dice, how's your day been? Are you having a good day? Uh, I just went out to Glasgow at my local town and it's very busy. It's like Christmas all over then. Yeah, it's something that you don't want to be a involved swine then. in a salon. That's an odd choice of decor. Alright, anybody in this bit? T with an tall earth symbol. Okay. Is that for this? The lock is surrounded by a triple circle. Nah. If I try it. As soon as they know us. Cool. Oh, this looks like the place. A lot of royal jelly. No, they found them before. 
few pages out of an old encyclopedia. Where all eyes size you up. Yeah. No. Chances are, that's the room my mother spoke of. Did she like also that? spoke of a Medusa. Should I go and try to find the creature now? Right, so we found the room. So, the name means nothing to me. Through the bad music. Can't open it. Medusa! It's Medusa. Sorry, I shouted there. I thought it sounded. Wait a minute. Turn her away. Because. I've got to find out what Mother was trying to do with her. Oh, wait, I thought I planned. The Medusa. A hero armed with a sword? Hmm. A hero with a lantern, and the last one holding a shield. I'll stake my life on it. All the statues form a single scene together. The poor devils are about to face the beast. Let's give them a helping hand. Is it... Is it maybe the Medusa faces these backwards? the beast the statues have to be lined up in a specific order what can the shield be for to protect its holder <laughs> why not but in that case what's the lantern for to blame step the Medusa. back and take a second louis be logical but open-minded think outside the box nobody said a statue has to have only one use i wonder if the lantern was to distract the medusa this shield can both protect the holder and also reflect the light from the lantern to distract the beast. In other words, I'll have to make an angle of 90 degrees between the lantern and the Medusa by turning the shield to face the sword. If Mortimer's the one who thought of all this stuff, then honestly, he must have a screw loose. Crazy idea, but worth a shot. Maybe? Yes! Take that, Mortimer. sake, Emily. <laughs> you scared the pants off me. Don't ever do that again. Well, keep your nose out of my business then. I, I don't know what you're talking about. Stop fooling around and tell me what you're doing here. I was feeling a bit peckish. I went in search of the kitchen and I ended up here. Your sense of direction is mind-boggling, isn't it? Yes. Well, no matter. I'll tolerate your presence this one time. Now, since you're here, make yourself useful. Look around on your side. I'll do the same on mine. And if you find anything of interest, let me know. Oh, yeah. In your dreams. At your service, madam. Whatever, bitch. Uh, 
The heavenly symbols refer to Pandora's box. Emily, I'm pretty sure I've got Pandora's box. Of course you have. You see an earthen pot and you immediately assume it can only be Pandora's box. Logical. What I like about you, Louis, is that you never fail to surprise me. Thank you. Is that a slip? Uh, oh, Emily, uh, what if I open the jar? Would that then make man responsible for all the evils? Try. It'll make a change. <laughs> all right, can we move on now? I do love your irony, but honestly, are you ever impressed by anything you see? By a chamber pot? No, you really do need to do better than that. I'll show you better than that then. Big breast. A golden fleece. It's freezing. Hurry up. Well. Cold? You want a rug? It'll warm you up. I wouldn't be caught dead in that horrible thing. <laughs> That's a pity. The gold color brings out your eyes. And your flattery brings out your boorishness. I think she's immune to flutting. Oh, uh, hey. Hey, Mortimer is the author of this work. It talks about his passion for art. A Chinese coin, recognizable by the hole in the middle. If I remember rightly, that's called a cash. <laughs> sorry, I haven't done it then. I'm sorry. Guess what I found? The Holy Grail. Older than that. A piece of Noah's Ark. Not that old. This could go on for hours. Just tell me. Caesar's laurel wreath. I can just see Mortimer dressed in a toga, wearing a laurel wreath, strutting around his manor all day long. You have a curious idea of Mortimer. Why? He's eccentric, like all the English are, isn't he? Well, if Peru stands for French grace, then if I were you, I wouldn't be making that sort of remark. Okay. She's all what a no play, isn't she? Well, looks like a pamphlet on different political regimes, written by Mortimer himself. You should see this sword, Emily. It's magnificent. I'm busy. Describe it to me. Uh, it looks like the sword of uh, Tanafa. This weapon is typically French, quite old, undoubtedly goes back to the Crusades. If it is a true Damask sword, it's worth more than a kingdom. Amber crystals. Amber crystals. Here's something interesting. A manor in Maine, hundreds of acres of land in Catalonia, properties in Shanghai. Incredible. Some of these deeds are over 600 years old, and all signed by the hand of Mortimer. I wonder if that's what inspired my mother's attention. How come all these documents have Mortimer's signature on them? Do you think all these properties really belong to him? Uh... Maybe Mortimer is immortal or capable of living for a very long time, like Methuselah. A first smile. Careful. <laughs> Keep that up and soon you'll end up laughing. Carry on sprouting inanities like that, and indeed I might. These documents are intriguing, but do you really think that's what attracted your mother's attention here? And how do you know my mother was interested in this room? I didn't know, I just supposed she was. And you just confirmed it. So, do you think she found what she came for? Maybe. I don't know. She was obsessed with Mortimer and... I must confess, these property deeds are troubling. If that's the case, why would she have left them? Once again, I don't know. We'll have to ask her when we find her. And what's your take? Uh... Why keep such a collection hidden in a secret room? Any thoughts? Mortimer has every reason in the world to conceal it, even if only to keep it from people like us. Hey, <laughs> Emily, we're not thieves. We're only looking. I wonder why my mother didn't make it clear what she was interested in here. She didn't have time to write it down, or maybe she wasn't sure of what she was looking for. Yeah, probably the or same one. she wanted to protect her discoveries. It's disturbing. 
You'll just have to search the rest of the room. Maybe we'll find something. Right. Okay, so papers found by Mortimer 600 years ago. I, is he immortal? What is that you found? A cameo pendant. What's going on? Emily? Nothing. For crying out loud, Emily, you lunged for that jewel like your life depended on it. Tell me what this is about. No. We just met Louis. I like you, but I can't just suddenly open myself up like a book to you. Listen, Emily. It seems pretty obvious to me that you haven't come here for the sole purpose of sampling Mortimer's cellar. Stop all the clever evasions and just trust me. And why the hell should I place my trust in you, Louis? When are you going to understand that I just want to help you? What do you expect? That I'll fall into your arms and say yes to everything you want? What are you talking about? I'm only asking you to trust me a little. If only on principle, as a member of the Golden Order, for example. I'll admit you are fairly reliable. That's it? I was expecting more. Please, Emily. Well, I'm prepared to trust you when it comes to choosing a French cheese. But I've nothing to gain by confiding in you any further than that. Nothing to gain? Damn it, Emily! I'm only trying to help you. Stop needing to gain something all the time. Because you think I need help? Just like everyone. You have your strengths and your weaknesses. And there's no use pretending otherwise. Ha! And I bet you found out where I'm weak, haven't you? Yes, a witness in cytology, I think. You think your scathing wit protects you, but in fact, it makes you blind. No sooner have people introduced themselves than you already see them in a bad light. You play the part of a strong woman, and yes, you are a strong woman, of course. But what I see is a sensitive young lady who lacks self-confidence. Stop adopting a defensive posture, and you'll see just how quickly new doors will open. There is some truth to what you say. Two I might have four. some weaknesses, but I don't need your help to overcome them. And I'm simply not contemplating collaborating with anyone at this time. Do you understand? I know you well enough to see that you're hiding something from me. Why won't you look me in the eyes? I've figured you out, but you refuse to accept it. And you're starting to find me charming too. I admit it, you win. You, worst investigator there ever was, have sussed me out. Shit, okay. <laughs> well, at least you made me smile. I already have a work partner. I know my weaknesses. I don't doubt that your abilities will be of use to me. But I already have all that, thanks to my teammate. Is there any chance you might tell me who he is? Or she? No, I've already said too much. Consider yourself lucky I've even given you this much. It's extremely rare, believe me. Come on, don't stop now that you've come this far. You know that eventually I'll end up making you talk. Well, since no one can resist you, let's see if you can guess who my partner is. You're a gambler, so... Your partner is... I'm going to say, and it's a woman. So I'm going to say it's a woman and it's... Your sister. Your sister? She's your partner. She's the one you're looking for. Well, I am impressed. How the devil did you guess I had a sister? Virtually no one even knows. Woo! When it comes to getting results, you are very good. I grant you that. You deserve to know why the sight of the cameo pendant affected me so strongly. I thought it belonged to Emma, my twin sister. Oh, now I get why you said you had a memory for two. Yes, you can't imagine to what extent though. As children, everyone got us mixed up. So one day we decided to play along. Since then, we have become one and the same. We have officially erased the identity of my sister Emma. Emily Hillsborough, the woman with two faces. Clever. But isn't it complicated? How do you make it work? One of us has no existence in the outside world. We share everything. Okay. First for one, then for the other. We dress the same, wear the same makeup, we speak the same. We've learned to act as one. When we accept a mission, we both turn up. 
This time, though, she went ahead, and I was meant to wait for her on the mainland. She was meant to meet Sir Home and bring back the details, so we could work out who would follow up. And there was a problem? She was supposed to return from Mortimer's one week ago. The boat turned up at Plymouth, but alas, no trace of my sister. Instead, a sailor passed me a message from home, notifying me of her sudden disappearance. So... My mother and your sister go missing just a few days apart. That's strange. That's really Maybe strange. Maybe their disappearances are linked. It's clearly a possibility, but up to now I haven't found a trace of either of them. None of this is very reassuring. By the way, Louis, now that you are in on the secret, you are obliged to keep it to yourself. Or you will pay very dearly. Don't worry. Your secret is safe with me. It's time to leave. Okay, so I'm very good at the uh, confrontations, I think, so found out that she's not a sister, Emma, uh, and I went missing about the same time as my mother did, Sarah, so uh, am I talking to Emma or am I talking to Emily, because they're twin sisters, I should be talking to either one, and it's the other one that's so. missing. What do you think of our first adventure? I must admit, it has been fun by your side. Same here. I think you thought you shot Polly up. Huh? Elizabeth. Oh, she's been drinking too much again. Louis, I need to talk to you right now. Good evening, Elizabeth. Actually, this is not a good time. I'm begging you, please don't leave me alone. I'll be waiting for you in your room, but don't be late. Oh, hey. I was sure there was a certain je ne sais quoi between us. <laughs> Louis, je ne sais we need quoi. to talk now, otherwise it'll be too late. It looks like Elizabeth really needs me, but if I start talking to her, for sure Emily won't wait for me. What should I do? Guys, in the next episode, we will either join Emily or we'll follow Elizabeth. I will see you there. Bye, guys.